Time is not a matter of seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years. Time is much more. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And then God began his six, nay, seven-day work of creation. And for six days God created and formed and perfected his physical creation in the realm of the earth. On the first day, he created light and separated light from darkness. And on the second day, he separated the skies from the earth. And the third day, he commanded trees to grow and green plants and inanimate objects. They grew all over the earth. But on the fourth day, just before he created animate things, animate things, God created the sun and the moon and the stars. And by them, he created time to govern, to rule the earth, as it said in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 19. And God said, let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars and God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light to the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 to 19 according to God's design time is not told by minutes second hours that is a very elementary form of time time is told by something more significant Time is told by light because when God wanted to make time, he created two great lights and from them he created the principle called time. And God knows what time it is by the measure of light that is upon the earth. Similarly, when divinely and prophetically, when God wants to know what time it is or when time wants to know what time it is, it looks upon the earth to know the amount of divine light that is available through God's emissaries, the church or the people of God as it was in the Old Testament. And by that, God is able to tell, is it day, is it night? So if there is enough light on the planet just to stop the darkness from overrunning the earth and darkness has no sway, then it is night. But if the light is so bright that the darkness is kept at bay and really cannot give a strong response, then it is day and not night. So when the light is weak, and just enough to hold the dark net back from completely overrunning the earth, that is night. But when the light is bright to the degree that the darkness has no response, that is day. This is how God sees time. And as a believer, this is how we will see time. You see, when we look at the entire creation, we had six days of competition, six days of battle between light and the darkness. And the darkness will have the upper hand the first, the first day, and it was evening and it was morning. It was a circle, six circles of prophecies of man battling with the darkness until the perfect day, the scripture says. And the path of the just is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. When did the perfect day come? The first day, prophetically speaking, came when the Son of Righteousness was upon the face of the earth. The Bible says, In Him was light, and the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it, could not overcome it. On the perfect day, the Son of Righteousness shone at full strength, and the darkness had no response to the brilliance of Christ Jesus. But there is yet another day that we're expecting, the seventh day, when all God's sons of righteousness rise up into perfection and then give an answer to darkness that the darkness has absolutely no response to. That is the fullness of the perfect day. You see, when Jesus was upon the earth, the kingdom of darkness had no response to him. Even as his weakest moment upon the cross, he dealt the deadliest blow to darkness. And when he rose and became the resurrected son, 
son of God, they could do nothing with him. They were completely powerless to his gaze. And then Jesus left the earth and said, occupy till I come. And since then, they have been the repeated seasons of darkness, night and day, night and day, revival and we go back to darkness and then revival and we go back to darkness. But there is coming upon us and the time is now when the perfect day must be. The time has come for the church to break out of the circles of light and darkness and go into ever increasing light, go into the perfect day. What is the perfect day? The perfect day is when we come to the stature of the Son of God. This is how God sees time. So, if time is the circles of light and darkness, the dominance of light and darkness, or rather the dominance of lesser light, lesser light and greater light upon the face of the earth, what time is it today on the planet? When we look at the things happening, economy, war, sicknesses, governments, all this evil upon the face of the earth, it tells us it is deep darkness that is upon the face of the earth, and it is time for the perfect day to break out once again. There is just enough light that has held darkness from completely overrunning the earth. But now the Father calls all of us to arise and shine, for our light has come in Christ Jesus. So, if night and day, according to the divine timepiece, is told by the amount of divine illumination upon the earth, face of the earth, and Christ is dwelling in us, what has hindered the final explosion or the final revelation of the perfect day where we have multiple sons of God all over the planet shining in the fullness of the glory in the face of Christ Jesus? I tell you. So, what has happened? Why has the light on the face of the earth dimmed? It's quite simple. You see, when God made man, he put us on the face of the earth to reflect and refract his glory all over the planet. But more and more as time has gone on, many of us believers are more interested in reflecting our own glory. We have come into time to use the blessings of God and the lights of God to begin to show how brilliant we are, how successful we are, and we are no longer luminaries who are interested in reflecting the divine light that comes in from a submission and a dying to self and our own glory and our own pursuits. Therefore, our our light has dimmed and the glory of man no matter how brilliant is no match for the primordial darkness that was in existence in the book of Genesis chapter 1 even before God created the present moon and sun and stars and even before God created man man in himself has no answer and response to the darkness we see this in the book of Genesis chapter 3 when the serpent faced man for the first time man fell flat because in himself he was no match for the darkness the only answer man has against the darkness is when man reflects the divine life. But if the man is pursuing his own beauty, his own glory, his own, uh, his own satisfaction, man cannot reflect the glory of God. Let me round up by saying this. You were not given time to reflect and explore your own glory. You and I were all given time for us to explore the seizings of the Father's timings and reflect and reflect the glory of the Most High God. You see, time is not seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years. Time is a trust given to us by the Father to see what we will become with the time that He has given us. Will we choose to become a man sent from God or Will we choose to become like Lucifer, who wanted to ascend above the thrones of God and become his own God? Time is not minutes, hours, seconds, days. Time is a trust. And this is why when the believer looks at time, he cannot afford to look at time from the same perspective that the world looks at time. He cannot afford to govern his life by, I'm 50 years now, I'm growing older. I'm 20 years now, I'm getting younger. He, he cannot afford that. He has to look at time from the divine perspective. What does God expect to see when he looks upon the earth? He expects to see more sons in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. And if that is not happening, 
after the first part of the seven day, the fullness of the seven day is when all of us become like him and he returns in the glory and the light is too much for this world to handle that he has to temporarily take us away while he deals with the darkness and allow the darkness have their day. Remember there was a prophetic story in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Cain killed his brother Abel. Cain had, you know, life became so difficult for him because of the curse that was put upon him. And Cain returned to the Lord God and said his punishment was too much for him and that God should leave the curse. And God did. And the Bible recorded that Cain left the presence of the Lord and went into the land of wandering. You see, that will happen again. When Cain's people, the sons of Cain, finally have their wish, when the children of light are completely taken, and Cain lifts the presence of God and experiences what it is to live in absolute darkness. This world will see that darkness again. But before it does, there is a great and shining light, the perfect day. Because the Bible says in the book of Genesis that on the seventh day, not the seventh night, on the seventh day, God rested from all his work because there was a luminary. And on the seventh day, on the perfect day, the Son of Righteousness rose with healing in his wings. It is time for us to rise up again. If you're wondering what time it is in the world with all the chaos that is happening, it is clear from the scriptures that in this last days, it is time for a church who is victorious, a church who is not pursuing numbers or its own glory or miracles to show how powerful it is, a church who is sold out to the Lamb of God like the apostles were. You see, I was having a conversation with a brother just yesterday and I was saying that it's quite interesting how um, it seems that the, uh, the Christ Jesus that the apostles knew or the Jesus Christ that the apostles knew and the Jesus Christ that we know are two completely different people. Why? Because if you look at the results they, 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 they carried or they expressed, the amount of light they reflected on the earth and the amount of light we're reflecting, it, it's, it's quite different. And the only explanation is we are beholding dimly. We cannot see Jesus. The Bible says, and when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Remember, Time is measured from the divine perspective according to the amount of light that is available on the earth. If the light is strong and powerful that the darkness has no sway, it is day. If the light is weak and can only hold the darkness from completely overrunning the earth, then it is night. What time is it in the world today and in your circle? My name is Reward and this is the introductory to the mysteries of time.